good. There ain't no lock on this here door. No huh? lock? No. I'll drive something in. Here, here. Huh? A knife won't hold it. Get it with him. You drive yeah. it in strong. He'll have to find us here. We won't wait. We're going to do him up now. No, you won't. I'll see him first, if you please. There was orders, Dragon. So it was. We'll go back up the passage. He can't have got up at one flight yet. Quick, then. Is it you crooks always manage to hit on the same places for your scoundrelly business? <laughs> well, I certainly thought after all this driving about in a closed cab, you'd show me something new. Seen it before, have you? Seen it before? Well, I should think so. I nabbed a friend of yours in this place while he was trying to drop himself out of that window. Ed Colvin, the cracksman. Colvin? I never heard of him before. No? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you certainly never heard of him after, I can tell you. <laughs> a brace of counterfeiters used these regal chambers in the spring of, um, 88. One of them hid in that cupboard. <laughs> Times have changed since then. So they have, Mr. Lanime, so they have. Then it was only counterfeiters, pickpockets, and petty swindlers of various kinds. Now... Eh? What now? Well, between you and me, Mr. Larrabee, we've heard some not altogether agreeable rumors. Rumors of some pretty shady work, not too far from here. And I've always had a suspicion. Ah, my surmise was correct. It is. It is what? Cooked. What does that signify to us? Nothing to us, Mr. Larrabee. Nothing to us. But it might signify a good deal to some poor devil who's been caught in this trap. Well, if it's nothing to us, suppose we leave it alone and get to business. My time is limited. Quite right, quite right. I should have realized these reflections could not possibly appeal to you. But I take a deep interest in anything that pertains to what are known as the criminal classes. And this same interest makes me rather curious to learn why you happen to choose such a singularly gruesome place for an ordinary business transaction. I chose this place, Mr. Holmes, because I thought you might not take such liberties as you did in my own house last night. You might not feel so much at home. There you miscalculate, Mr. Larrabee. I feel perfectly at home. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. How kind of you. Ah. <laughs> which is the object of this meeting. I haven't opened it yet, but Miss Faulkner tells me everything is here. Then there is no need of opening it, Mr. Ladderby. Oh, well, I want to see you satisfied. But that is the precise condition in which you now behold me. Miss Faulkner is a truthful young lady. Her word is sufficient. Very well. Now, what shall we say, Mr. Holmes? Of course, we want a pretty stiff price for these. Miss Faulkner is giving up everything. She wouldn't be satisfied unless the results justified it. Suppose, Mr. Larrabee, that as Miss Faulkner knows nothing whatever about this little affair, we omit her name from the discussion. Who told you she doesn't know? You did. Every look, tone, gesture, everything you've said and done since I've been in this place has informed me she has never agreed to this transaction. It is a little speculation of your own. I suppose you think you can read me like a book? No, like a primer. <laughs> well, let that pass. How much will you give? A thousand pounds. I couldn't take what it. What do you ask? Five thousand. I couldn't give it. <laughs> Very well. 
We've had all this trouble for nothing. Oh, don't say that, Mr. Larrabee. Don't say that. To me, the occasion has been doubly interesting. I have not only had the pleasure of seeing you again, I have also availed myself of the opportunity of making several observations about this place which might not come amiss. Why, I've been offered 4,000. Why didn't you take it? Because I intend to get more. That is too bad. If they offered 4,000, they'll give five. They won't give anything. Why not? They've turned the case over to me. Will you give me 3,000? <laughs> Strange as it may seem, Mr. Larrabee, my time is quite as limited as yours. I have brought with me the sum of 1,000 pounds. That is all that I wish to pay. If it is your desire to sell at that figure, kindly apprise me of that fact at once. If not, permit me to wish you a good night. Go on, you can have it. It's too small a matter to haggle over. I thought you said you brought a thousand pounds. That's what I said. This is it. You brought a trifle more, I see. Well, I didn't say I hadn't brought any more. Ha! You can do your own little tricks when it comes to it, can't you? It depends on who I'm dealing with. Now I've got you where I want you, Jim Larrabee. You've been so cautious, so cunning, so clever, so wise. We couldn't find a thing to hold you for. But that little slip will get you ten years for robbery. You'll have me in, will you? What are your views about being able to get away from here yourself? I do not anticipate any particular difficulty. Perhaps you'll change your mind about Whether that. Whether I change my mind or not, I certainly shall leave this place, and your arrest will swiftly follow. My arrest? <laughs> robbery? Why, even if you get away from here, you haven't got a witness. Not a witness to your name. I'm not so sure of that, Mr. Latterby. Do you usually fasten that door with a knife? Get away from that door! Stand back! <laughs> you contemptible scoundrel! <laughs> What does this mean? I'll show you what it means, curse quick! I'm afraid you're badly hurt, Miss Faulkner. Oh, Mr. Holmes! Ah, Cragen. Delighted to see you. <laughs> and you too, McTague. I infer from your presence here that I am not dealing with Mr. Larrabee alone. Your inference is quite correct, Mr. Holmes. Well, it is not difficult to imagine who is at the bottom of such a conspiracy as this. Oh, Miss Faulkner, I hope you're beginning to feel more yourself. We shall be leaving here very soon. Oh, yes, do let us go, Mr. Holmes. You'll have to wait a bit, Mr. Holmes. We've got a little matter of business we will like to talk over. Very well, Cragen. I'll see you tomorrow morning in your cell at Bow Street. <laughs> Very sorry, sir. I can't wait till morning. It's got to be set tonight. All right, Cragen. We'll settle it tonight. Oh, it's so very important, Mr. Holmes. So very important indeed. You'll have to tend to it now. Ah! He's got his revolver. Here it is. Ah, Leary. <laughs> it needed only your blithe personality to make the party complete. There is only one other I could wish to welcome here, and that is the talented author of this midnight carnival. We shall have him, however, by tomorrow night. Though he ain't here, Mr. Holmes, he gave me a message for you. He presents his kindest compliments and wishes you a pleasant trip across. <laughs> it's very kind of him, I'm sure. <laughs> You're writing your will, I suppose? No, just a brief description of one or two of you gentlemen for the police. Wow. They know the rest. And when will you give it in, Mr. Holmes? In nine or nine and a half minutes, Mr. Leary. Oh, you expect to leave here in nine minutes, eh? No, in one. It will take me eight minutes to find a policeman. This is a dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're ready to start, let us know. I'm ready. 
Now. Wait a bit. You better listen to me. We're going to tie you down nice and tight to the top of that table. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But I don't think you will. That's my idea, you know. And you'll save yourself a great deal of trouble if you submit nice and quiet, like, because of you don't. Mr. Holmes. Come away from him. Come over here if you don't want to get hurt. My child, if you don't want to get hurt, don't leave my side for a second. Aren't you coming? No. You better look out, miss. He might get killed. Then you can kill me, too. Well, I'm afraid you don't mean that, Miss Faulkner. I do. No, no, you don't. You would not say it at another time or place. I would say it anywhere, always. So, you'll have it out with us, eh? Did you imagine for one moment, Cragen, that I won't have it out with you? Well, then, I'll have to give you one, same as I give your right-hand man this afternoon. Ah, you heard him say it. Same as he did my right-hand man this afternoon. Yes, yes. Don't forget that face. I shall want you to identify it in three days' time in the prisoner's dock. <laughs> yes, and the rest of you with him. Oh, gentlemen, you surprise me, thinking you are sure of anyone in this room and never taking the trouble to look at that window. If you'd wanted to make it perfectly safe, you should have had those missing bars put in. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Vaz, you don't get out of here quite as easy as you expect. There are so many ways, Mr. Larrabee, I hardly know which to choose. You better choose quick, I'll tell you that. Very well, Mr. Cragen. I'll choose it once. And my choice falls on this. Pull that cigar! Look at him! This cigar! Ow! 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 God! Look out! He's going for the window! Follow the cigar! Get it's that down. light! It's safety lock! Yeah. Is it? Oh! Um, I left the cigar for you on the windowsill. <laughs> uh.